Would you believe you can get your freezer stacked? I mean, stacked. Stacked. In half an hour. We are sharing with you today our fastest freezer meals. They are not necessarily our healthiest. <laughs> you know, okay, listen. You're making these at home, therefore they're already healthier. Because yes. you know what's in them. You can control the sugar, you can control the salt, you can control the oil. So if you look at a recipe and think, meh, there's ways that, you know, if you're inclined, you can zip it up. It's still going to be hitting the drive through Yes, and it's, obviously it saves know. so much money. But these have less vegetables than most Fair. of our freezer meals because more vegetables equals more prep. And today... We're being speedy. Yep. These this are, is... These are dump recipes. This is the speed run of freezer <laughs> meals. Are you ready? Do you, do you have kids that are at the right age for the speed? <laughs> this is the speed run of freezer meals. We're gonna do it right now. There is a time and a place for those healthy meals and we've certainly got a ton. So you can check out our video library and our website, freezermeals101.com to find those. Today is all about speed and done is better than perfect. Yes, it is. That is a motto that we live by. We still have not got the t-shirt printed. What is going on? We need to get our merch going. <laughs> we do. We do. But done is better than perfect. Air is the enemy. What's another good one that we get all the time? Squeezy tube ginger. <laughs> we totally need a t-shirt that says squeezy tube ginger. Oh, that's good. Anyway, today is all about speed and so we are going to dive right into this first recipe and it is shredded beef nachos. Nachos are great anytime, but this ensures that you're going to have some protein on there and fancy your nachos up a little bit. So into a large freezer bag, you're going to put a beef check roast. Now this does not have to be a huge one. And then you're gonna take some taco seasoning. We get ours in bulk or we make it ourselves. So we use four tablespoons or you can just use one packet. We're gonna add that in there and then we're just gonna rub it all over the roast. Then into that freezer bag, you're gonna add some salsa and beef broth. And that is seriously it four ingredients and this is done, but it does not taste like a four ingredient recipe. This is so flavorful. And the salsa is a bit of a cheat because you didn't have to cut any vegetables, but you kind of get your diced peppers, diced onions, and diced tomatoes right there in the salsa. You're gonna take as much air as you can out of that freezer bag because when you're freezer cooking, air is the enemy. Air is gonna be what causes your freezer burn and we're all about avoiding that. Seal this, freeze it, and on the day you go to cook it, you thaw it, and you can cook this in the instant pot or in the slow cooker. When you go to serve it, you can just shred it and serve it on top of your tortilla chips with shredded cheese and all your other nacho toppings. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm all about the more nacho toppings, the better, but I do like it if they're evenly distributed. So each chip <laughs> gets... I watched Charlotte make nachos for the first time and it was like, it was like a, a symphony or an, like the, it was well orchestrated. It was important because every chip has to have the perfect... Like, it's the perfect bite. It's the perfect bite. And you want to be fair to all the chips. You don't want some to get left out, right? <laughs> I should show you how I make nachos sometimes. Oh. I make closer to restaurant nachos. Right. You I just still throw. use. I. Okay. You have influenced me a bit. I do <laughs> space them a little bit better now. And I do try to make it a little bit more even, but it is a little more loosey goosey <laughs> than, than what Charlotte has going on over here. Um, and, fun fact Charlotte doesn't eat beef. So this is delicious, but she hasn't eaten it. I have, and it is amazing. You like, you eat chicken nachos. Yes, so I've told you that it's delicious because my she knows family has said it's delicious. Christy has said it's delicious. Christy's family devoured this. We have members in our club and our freezer meal group who have said this is amazing. So I'm going on good authority that this is delicious. Yeah, that's fair. On my personal nachos, I either have them without meat or 
We've got this ground chicken taco meat that mm -hmm. I've kind of become obsessed with putting on my nachos. It's what I had recently. And we also have a few other shredded chicken, actually one of them is gonna be in this video, mm -hmm. meat that taste so so good on nachos so i'm not opposed to having meat on nachos but i do have a system it's like it has to be fresh jalapenos my husband grew me some this year on our deck and so these are like fresher than fresh but you know some people use How the were, they? Were, they, were they extra spicy they were the same They're some were spicy and some were not and okay. it just kind of depended on the on the i pepper. saw them on the deck they looked really good they're so good mm -hmm. so i have been having fresh jalapenos like in my eggs in my on my nachos in my, pretty much anything that could take a jalapeno so, you know you got some pasta you just throw some jalapenos in there <laughs> anyway funny. um but you've got your tomatoes your peppers like red peppers really good on nachos if you want, you can do olives. My brother taught me to do sliced dill pickles, and I'm kind of you, converted. I, you like it, hey? Yeah, I do it most of the time now. Yeah. it's got that tangy saltiness. It would be like having capers in mm -hmm. something, right? It's got that zip. Then the olives do the same thing. Yes. I like, I like putting olives on ours. <laughs> anyway, we have divulged down a very, uh, very long specific nacho train. But I'm going to let Christy tell you what you can do if you find a sale mm -hmm. on your beef roasts. One more thing I'm gonna say about the nachos. If you don't use all your meat because it's been cooked then, you can refreeze that. Oh, and you yes, can use it tip. next time, right? Mm -hmm. This next recipe is beef dip and it is such a good recipe and it is really simple to put together. My brother has a beef dip recipe that has like 20 different ingredients. You do not need to get that crazy. It will be just as good with this. We start out with your chuck roast because you found that terrific sale and you want to make it something else besides your beef nachos. You're going to add in your minced garlic, your dry onion soup mix, your beef broth, and a little bit of pepper. That's all right in your bag. You can mix it around, get all that air out because air is the enemy and you want to seal it up, throw it in your freezer. On the day of cooking, this is perfect for slow cooking. You're gonna let that beef be nice and slow in your slow cooker. And then the leftover uh, drippings that are in your slow cooker are the au jus that you can have. So here's how we make beef dip at our house. You're gonna take your buns and you're gonna toast them. And then you're gonna make some garlic mayo. If you've never made garlic mayo before, I'm just gonna tell you really quick. A couple of tablespoons, like heaping tablespoons, maybe half a cup of mayo. You're gonna put in some of the, we just use the garlic from the jar. We go through so much of it that it isn't, we just can't mince it all ourselves. We go through these jars that we buy at Costco. So we add some of the jarred garlic to it. Some people call it jarlic, big fan of that. And a little bit of salt and pepper and a squeeze of lemon juice and you mix it up and now bam, you have garlic mayo. Put that on your buns, lay your roast beef down, your shredded roast beef your other bun, and then you have your beef dip. You can just dip it right into your au jus, and mama, this is good. Restaurant quality food at home, yeah. and it took you maybe three minutes to put that all in the bag and it totally did. put it in your freezer. <laughs> Probably took me longer to get the ingredients out of my cupboard. So if you are planning a big freezer meal session and you wanna do all of this, get all your ingredients out, have them sitting out there so that they're easy to access and then put them all away at the end when you're done everything. Now, this next recipe is another roast recipe. Don't worry, this is our last roast recipe today. We're not sharing all beef today, we're sharing a mixture, but the reason we are doing these in order of protein is when you go to assemble your freezer meals, it is at least twice as fast if you put them together by protein because you have it out. You're also not gonna have cross-contamination, because you're not gonna have different meats that are touching and you can, of course, wash your hands in between. So you're not gonna be, you know, touching your beef and then touching your the hands chicken. The chicken. No. Yeah. So it's great to do one protein at a time. This is our Mississippi pot roast and we've only been making it for a few months and it's already rising in the ranks for us. It really, really is. I had this jar of pepperoncini peppers did I say that right? I always say it yeah. wrong. And I didn't know what to do with them. I had made a supper for our supper club that we are in, that we love. And I had all these peppers and I'm like, I don't know what to do with all of these. It's a huge jar. Charlotte will know what to do. <laughs> and so she did, she found this recipe and it's awesome. 
So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add your roast, and then you're gonna add some of those pepperoncini peppers and the juice from them. Now, I like to take the stems off right here before I put them in the bag because then it's gonna save you doing that later. And then you're just gonna throw in some butter. You don't even have to melt it. You just literally just throw in half a cup of butter and then a packet of oju gravy a packet of dry ranch seasoning or we buy ours in bulk so we just measure it out and then a little bit of salt and pepper and that's seriously it this one comes together in minutes to you're going to just again get as much air as you can out of that bag seal it put this in your freezer and on the day you go to cook it it cooks up in your slow cooker you could also do it in the instant pot then you're going to shred it and this one is so good. Again, I don't eat beef, but I've heard it is so, so good, good on mashed potatoes. Or you could have it on um, the roasted potatoes too. Mm -hmm. This one is super, super easy. And because everyone in my life is raving about this recipe and I, I don't eat beef, so I can't eat it. We are actually, next week, going to be doing a chicken version. <laughs> we heard that the chicken version existed. People were mentioning it when they saw us in our mega session do the Mississippi pot roast. And they're like, you can do this with chicken. So Sharla has found a recipe that we've adapted for freezer meals. This is looking promising. And I'm so excited that you get to have it with me. I am excited to try it. <laughs> You know, I, I was going to find a way, but thankfully our viewers let us know that there is a chicken version. We'll see. Verdict is not in yet because we haven't made it, but I'm excited. This zippy shredded chicken tacos is what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about the shredded beef nachos. It is great to put on nachos. It's great to have in tacos. You could put this in a burrito. You could put this on tostadas. You could make it into a chicken taco salad. You know how versatile taco stuff anything is. And this is called Zippy Shredded Chicken Tacos because let me tell you, hold on to your hats. It's so good. It is so flavorful. And hold on to your hats. It's gonna go quick. <laughs> we start out with our boneless, skinless chicken breasts in our bag. We're going to add in four tablespoons of our taco seasoning. That's equivalent to one packet. And we're going to add in a half a packet of dry ranch seasoning. We do buy ours in bulk, a couple of tablespoons. The dry ranch seasoning isn't a full four tablespoons. It's like three and a... So, you know, you could probably measure it with your heart and it would be okay. So at least two tablespoons. If you go three, nobody's gonna kick you out. Lastly, here's where some of the zip comes. We're gonna add in a can of fire roasted tomatoes. If you ever been in the grocery store and looked and thought, what on earth am I gonna make with fire roasted tomatoes in a can? This is what you're gonna make with it. And I promise you, it is so worth it to grab that. We're gonna get it all in the bag, mix it around, seal it up after taking out that excess air and get it in our freezer. So for cooking instructions, again, just in your crock pot because we want to shred this because it's gonna be go nicer on your tacos or on your nachos. And we have talked at length in the past about our favorite ways to shred things. You have your <laughs> own. You know, you can do it in your with your mixer. You can, I take it out and do it with a fork and I put it back into the crock pot one at a time. I like using and you do my it mix in. and chop. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like that thing that you use to brown meat. Yeah. I like to use that. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah. So however you want to shred your chicken breasts, that's just fine. Put this one in your repertoire. It is easy and it is really, really great. Because when we assemble our freezer meals, we do the same proteins together. Like we were saying earlier, I'm going to do another chicken one. Now, another reason to do multiple recipes with the same protein is if you can find that protein on sale, then you can plan your meals around that sale. And you can take full advantage of it because nothing's gonna go to waste. You're not gonna buy chicken breasts, get home and just toss the chicken breasts in their package in the freezer, which we all know you're gonna end up throwing them away four months from now because they're gonna have freezer burn. You won't have put them in a proper package. You won't have put a sauce on them and you have good intentions, but yeah, that's ended up in my garbage more than <laughs> Once. Yeah, me too. And so this is a situation where you can see that sale at the store. You can know, ah, 
I can make these into freezer meals and you can, if you're a member of our Freezer Meals 101 Club, you can go right on your phone, pull that up, touch the chicken button and have all the chicken recipes populate. And then you could even in the store, if you took a few minutes, choose the ones you want, then you would have the ability to touch another button and print out your shopping list. Or obviously you don't have a printer at the store, but pull up your shopping list. And then you could get the other ingredients that you'll need to make those yes, recipes you totally when you get could. Home. Then you'd be set. Otherwise, if you knew there was a sale because you saw it in the flyer, you could sit in the comfort of your own home and print your list and do things a little bit less chaotically. <laughs> but either way works. We know some of you really like the chaos. <laughs> we, we're aware. You're living by the seat of your pants. And we've been there. We uh, we have done it both ways. We have done uh, it both ways. Christy called me once from one of the grocery stores locally and said, there's a two for one sale on beef strips. And I didn't wait to figure out like what I'm going to make. Start the car. Totally. We just drove to the store. Drove to the store. And, and then to the next store with the, you know, the same, the same store, sale. different location. And uh, I didn't want to completely buy them out, but which I've since been told that usually they have more in the back. I think it was Juliana that gave us that tip, so thank you for that. And so now I know I could have actually taken all the ones that were Or at least talk to the meat manager and be like, do you have more? Yeah, because I don't want to make it so you the don't next wipe person it out can't totally. have it. But anyway, okay, we have gone on a rabbit trail again, but we're back to our barbecue shredded chicken. And this is one of my favorites because my family loves it. It's one of those things where when you're eating it, you're like a mess. Like you're like dripping down your face. And to me, that's kind of the sign of a good... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. If you sometimes. need a bib, you know it's going to be good. Right? The messier, the better. Sometimes, not all the time. And you might not want to have this on a first date. There's a time and a place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but into your large freezer bag, you're going to put your boneless, skinless chicken thighs or boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And then you're gonna add some finely minced onion, some garlic, again, just from the jar, and some barbecue sauce and apple cider vinegar. Now, what we like to do is we like to put a little splash of the apple cider vinegar into the barbecue sauce jar mm -hmm. and put the lid back on and shake it up really well so that we get all of the barbecue sauce because we don't like to waste anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Both for, you know, frugal reasons and waste reasons. Now for this one, you do have to do the teensiest, tiniest bit of prep because you did have to mince that onion, but you're going to go ahead and mince a little more because there's a recipe coming later that also needs minced onion. And if you're going to do one onion, you might as well do two. It's almost just as fast and you dirty the same amount of dishes. So then you're going to get the air out of your bag, seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to cook this, again, you just put it in your slow cooker. So it's a set it and forget it one. You shred it again when you're done, whichever your shredding version you prefer. Your technique. Your techni <laughs> shredding technique. And then you serve it on buns with the garlic mayo that Christy was talking about yes. earlier. Yes. And... I recommend that you also add some coleslaw. Pulled pork is common to have with the pork, the, the garlic mayo and the coleslaw. So it made very good sense to also add it to this barbecue shredded chicken. And it really has kicked it up a notch. And it gives that crunch. It's great. It's great. And then you don't really need a side with this because you've got your veggies with the coleslaw. Mm -hmm. Some people have it with potato chips because this is a great one if you're gonna have a summer barbecue. Really, you can say your bun, your veggies with the coleslaw, you're done. You have extra coleslaw too, there's no rules. Mm -hmm. There's no rules. So keeping with our chicken theme, this next one is chicken hurry. I had a little chuckle the first time I ever saw this recipe because I grew up in a very meat and potatoes house. We didn't, you know, typically put like barbecue sauce on meat, like it was salt and pepper and even vegetables, unless it was like your first harvest of peas for the season. Sometimes we'd have creamed peas. Mm. We had cows, so we had like fresh cream and oh. So we would have creamed peas with dill, but our, our meat was just really salt and pepper, 
Sometimes you get it like seasoning salt, something like that was Fancy. really kicking it. That was really kicking it up. My mom was a fantastic cook, but that was just how she was taught to cook. So that's how we cooked. So that's how I cooked till I met Sharla and she said, we could make chicken hurry in our next freezer meals. And I'm like, what is that? She said, you've never had chicken hurry. And I'm like, I've never even heard of chicken hurry. This again, this very fast. I think this is what you were thinking of when you're like, they're not always the healthiest because there's some sugar yeah. in this one. And this was one where when I was growing up, this recipe went around our neighborhood, like all the moms yeah. started to make it. It was probably, you know, when you're in the doctor's office in the waiting room and you see the recipes in the magazines, sure. someone had probably seen it there because that's how a lot of the recipes in the neighborhood came about. Yep. And then, you know, brought it home, made it, their kids loved it. I mean, what's not to love? Sugar and ketchup, right? And then... <laughs> Right. And then they shared it with everybody. And so I grew up making this and thinking that everybody else made this because everyone in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. If you've never heard of this before, you're welcome. This is chicken hurry. We like to do it with chicken thighs, but you can also do it with chicken breasts. We're going to add our chicken thighs or chicken breasts, boneless, skinless, into our bag. We're going to add in some ketchup, some water, some brown sugar, and some dry onion soup mix. And that's it. We're gonna mix it around. You could do this in a bowl and add it in, or you could do it right in the bag. You're gonna get rid of that extra air. Get it into your freezer on the day of cooking. There's a number of ways that you can cook this. We used to always do it in the oven. It can go in the slow cooker if you watch your temperature a little bit. And I prefer to do it in a skillet because then it cooks down and it gives it nice color. And I think it just looks really nice and a little bit stronger flavor because some of that water boils off. So I have to tell you a really short story about that is that oh. one, one time, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Sharla and I'm Christy and we're neighbors. neighbors. And so one night she and her husband were going to come over and have a games night and she and I were talking about like, you know, do you want to do appies or do, should we have supper or should they eat first? Or, and I was like, how about we pull out like the same freezer meal? Or maybe we even already had. I don't know. No, it's, it's possible. We have totally, we have we have totally done that. Because yeah. we get together once every three months and make like over a hundred, sometimes over 150 freezer meals. And then we divide them. Yeah. So we make four of each we'd each take home two. So we have the same food in our freezers <laughs> at any given time. We definitely go for different things first. Yes. I think our, our freezers look very different now than they did at the beginning. Definitely, of mine is full of chicken with marinades and yours is full of the more like full meal full ones. Full meal ones, yeah. But she had chicken hurry, I had chicken hurry, so she brought hers over after cooking it and I had cooked mine in the oven and mine looked so sad next to hers because it was like nice and caramelized and and like some of the moisture had cooked off and yeah. and mine was like in this like so like it was it was saucy liquidy. it was saucy and it wasn't like as vibrant looking still delicious don't get me wrong do this still in the delicious. oven there's nothing wrong with that at all just by the comparison it was like i was actually a little bit embarrassed well, my kids went for hers first, and that's the part where I was really like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I said after, we should add the skillet to this. And actually, it's a really good one to do in the barbecue too. It has a lot of extra sauce, so you don't, you could just discard the sauce, but it goes nicely on the barbecue. And the leftovers make good soup. And it sounds weird that's because true. it's so sweet, but she has made very very good chicken soup out of chicken hurry <laughs> and i add the sauce into it which is so weird i know but it makes amazing soup so <laughs> it does chicken hurry for the win now it's not for everybody there are people that look at this and say ketchup yuck that's fine it doesn't have to be for everybody but you take it to your next potluck and it will be a winner <laughs> now this next recipe is kind of similar because mm -hmm. it has well, it has one similar ingredient, two, including the chicken, but it also is one of those kind of odd and, again, not the healthiest, but delicious. Your kids will eat it. Very strange. And it has a lot of sauce. So they're kind of similar recipes, mm -hmm. even though they're not. So into your large freezer bag. Oh, tell us what it's called. Okay. Tell, it, tell us what it's called, Charla. So this recipe is called That Lady's Chicken. And you can say that with whatever inflection you want. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And this, this woman does not have a mean bone in her body. Uh, but she named it that lady's chicken. <laughs> and that's my favorite thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However you want to put the inflection on that lady's chicken into your large present That head. lady's chicken. Go that on. lady's chicken. That lady's chicken. <laughs> Into your large freezer bag, you're going to put your chicken, boneless, skinless chicken, breasts or thighs, and then you're gonna add a bottle of Russian dressing. Now, I have to tell you, Russian dressing is getting super hard to find, so we often will substitute Catalina dressing for the Russian, and it still tastes good. It's not quite the same, but you'll get the general idea, and it, people still rave about it. Then you're gonna add some apricot jam. You could substitute peach jam for that if you couldn't find apricot. And some dry onion soup mix. And just like we used it in the chicken hurry, we do buy it in bulk. We are able to get an MSG free variety, which we really like, and it's much less expensive to buy it in bulk. So you're saving money because you're using similar ingredients and buying them in bulk. Now listen, if you have it in your pantry already, one package, is equal to four tablespoons mm -hmm. of the dry onion soup mix. So if you already have it, just go ahead and use it. But if you find it in bulk, it does have all those other benefits. You just need to know the ratio, right? Then you're going to, of course, squish this around in the bag. We like to squish things around in the bag. Sometimes we do it in a bowl and you can do that too. But the thing about the bag is then you don't have any dishes to clean after you've done assembling this. And we're fans of less dishes. So then you're going to seal it freeze it and on the day of cooking, you can cook this one in the oven or in the slow cooker. Now with this one, I wouldn't do it in a skillet because there is an abundance of sauce. Yeah, it is a very saucy one. It's definitely a slow cooker or oven sort of meal. Um, so good and the sauce is so good. You can do this with rice, pasta, you could do it with potatoes. Yeah. Really, it's awesome. This is one where my kids like it so much that if all of our kids are home, because some of our kids are like young adults and older teens, and so they're not always home all the time. And they don't even all, we are, one of our sons just got married, so he, he doesn't live at home anymore, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of the, the, the nature of those things. Um, not always, but in this case. Anyway, when all of our kids are home, I have to take out two bags of this. To feed them. Oh yeah, because it's, it's such a popular. hit. It's popular. Yeah. This next recipe is one of the ones we came up with when Charla found that, or when I found the smoking deal on the beef strips. Um, and it is probably my favorite thing that we do with the beef strips. It's called. It's really good. It's Mongolian beef, and it just is packed with flavor, and it is so simple to put together. We start out with our beef strips right into our bag. We're gonna add ginger, like fresh ginger. So we use a squeezy tube. Did we talk about the squeezy tube ginger already? Just on the shirt. We talk about squeezy tube ginger a lot because that's what we use. It's in your produce department. You don't have to peel and shred your ginger. It can come in a tube. It just skips a, a big step for us and we use a lot of it. So it's very worth it for us to have our little squeezy tubes of ginger. So we add in our ginger, our minced garlic, um, soy sauce, water, a little bit of brown sugar. Now, carrots cut into matchsticks. You can do this yourself. It's easy to do as prep, but you can also usually find matchstick carrots in your uh, produce section that are already prepped for you. And then you want to have a couple of green onions that are sliced and add those in. Everything goes into the bag. We're gonna zip it up and give it a good toss around, uh, smush it around. On the day of cooking, you want to thaw this you can definitely do it in the skillet. Sometimes this is one I like to do in the slow cooker because depending on the cut of beef that you've made, got your strips from, sometimes they're a little bit tougher and you want to give them a little more time to break down. But this is an excellent one for the skillet and it does all come together very quickly. So it has quite a bit of sauce with it. So we're going to thicken the sauce. So on the day of cooking, you're going to need a bit of cornstarch and you're going to mix that in the cold water and then drizzle it in until you have your sauce to be a little bit thicker. You can have this with noodles. You can have this with rice. Uh, we've totally had it with, with potatoes because we're a potato family and it's always good. It is so, so flavorful. This next meal is barbecue salmon. 
Again, we are going to see some similar ingredients that we're gonna have in other recipes. So we have some sliced onion in this one. We have the brown sugar again. We have our salmon fillet. Check for pin bones, make sure that it's good. Lots of times we will pre-cut ours into serving size. It fits into the bag nicer. And we're going to add in your barbecue sauce, just whatever is your favorite kind of barbecue sauce, teeny bit of brown sugar, and your green onion that's been sliced. So here we just had the green onions in the Mongolian beef. Now we get to use them again in the salmon. A uh, little bit of salt and pepper in there, squish it around, coat all of your salmon, and then get all that hair out and seal it up. On the day of cooking, you just wanna let this thaw and do it on your barbecue. Now, there are different ways to barbecue salmon. You can soak your cedar plank and do it on that. Sometimes, I have like a pampered chef, it's called the rock crock stuff, and that can go on your barbecue. I like to do it on there, so you still get the barbecue vibe and flavor, but it doesn't fall apart and fall through. Uh, you can do it on tin foil, or you, if you're a good enough barbecuer, you can do it right on the grill. Um, and, and hardly needs anything to cook this. This will be under 10 minutes and you're done. It's a really tasty one. It is really, really good. <laughs> yeah, it is. Before I get to our next recipe, I wanna just give you a few tips because we are saying that you can make all 12 of these meals in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely true, but there's a few things that have to happen in order for that to take place. One is you have to have all of your groceries, so you have to be prepared that way, of course. You want to have all of your ingredients out because you're gonna spend most of that half an hour looking for ingredients if you don't have everything set out already. I kind of set mine into stations when I do it that way so that things are grouped together. And just like we saw how the barbecue salmon and the Mongolian beef both had the sliced green onions, I would have those two next to each other and the recipes printed out so that everything is like ready to go, mm -hmm. have your bags out, fold them over. You can use those bag holder clip things, but we find that those slow us down. So we just find that if we open our bag on the bottom and then fold the top over, they hold open well enough for us to throw the ingredients in. We've become experts. Yes, <laughs> and none of these recipes are soups or anything that is really super saucy where it might like, you know. Tip over. Tip, yeah, yeah. That where you need a friend. Happened. <laughs> it's happened, it's happened. If you do end up with a really saucy one, like you're making a soup, make sure you put it in a, in a jug. That's okay. Another thing is to have your prep done first. Normally, if you were doing freezer meals, you'd probably have a lot more prep. You might be browning your beef or your ground sausage. You might be cooking and cubing chicken or doing all kinds of sliced peppers mm -hmm. and diced zucchini. All your vegetable all the mm -hmm. For these, there's pretty minimal. This much prep. If you're organized, this can absolutely happen in half an hour for assembly. No problem. Now, if you are willing, to put in maybe 45, 50 minutes, you can double each of these. Yes, you can. Now, there's 12 recipes that we're, we're not done. Hang in there, we're yeah. not done. We have more recipes coming. But 12, that's like basically two weeks because there might be a couple of nights where, you know, you don't, you you don't have cook, leftovers. you have leftovers or you actually order pizza because you miss pizza because we haven't eaten it in two weeks. You double these, that's like a month of freezer meals. So, do you hear how that sounds when you say it out loud? That is a month of freezer meals where it is all taken care of. It's so fast to put together initially, but it's also so much easier on the other end. It really, really is. It's not so much about not having to cook. I, that's part of it for sure, because you're not having to dirty the dishes and mess your kitchen and- Or think. That was so much pressure before to try to figure out. And some days would get really, really busy. Oh, I've got seven kids, so. Every day was busy. It's busy. <laughs> and then you get to like 3.30, 4 o'clock and you realize I haven't, I have no idea what we're making for supper tonight. Like I have no idea. I, I'm like popcorn again, like, <laughs> you know, like I don't know. <laughs> or breakfast for dinner. And there's nothing wrong with breakfast for dinner, but it's so nice to not have, we call it the 4 p.m. dinner dread. Yeah. 
to not have that anymore, to never have to worry about what I'm gonna feed my family or what I'm gonna eat is so nice. So we're gonna get to some more recipes here, but I just wanted to give you those tips and I also wanted to say this, you get faster as you go. We started out when we were doing like our big mega sessions, it would be like two 10 hour days of assembly and we were so fatigued. We were sore, our hips and our knees would get sore. And we were only ending up with like 80, 88 recipes Yeah, we after were that. so slow. And over time, you know, we made these little adjustments, like let's do all the protein together. Like, and then it's done. It's so much faster. We got an electric can opener that made it faster. There was ways to not cut corners, but we just really got better at it. We just got yeah. faster, even even folding those bags where we're faster at it. And we've we've made over 5,000 freezing meals. We're really good at folding the bag. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of experience folding we've the bags. We've got a lot of experience folding the bags. And so it is totally achievable. It is totally possible. Get a friend. It's more fun. It's more fun with a friend. Group your husband, get your kids to help. It is absolutely doable. I have a quick story because I'm full of stories. I have a friend growing up, he was one of the few kids in school that his mom worked as well as the dad. And the dad didn't cook. And in fact, he wasn't home a lot. He was a long haul trucker. And so the two boys would come home and they'd be on their own and she would get home from work and she was exhausted. And she would make, sometimes it was just oatmeal. She just had to fill their bellies and that's all she had in her to do. And I'm gonna get emotional about it. I just care about these people a lot. And so when their dad was there, he would always make sure that those boys thanked their mom for mm -hmm. supper. It didn't matter what it was. They were always thankful for supper. And I just think how much better her life would have been if she had had some freezer meals in the freezer. When the kids are little, you know, it's a little harder, but when you have teenagers, they can take it out. They can get it started. She could have been coming home to meals that she had initially prepared but they would be hot and they would be ready to go and maybe she would, you and know. She could have been eating healthier. She, she could have been eating. It wouldn't have had to be oatmeal for supper. And because, not have the stress of it. Because she was just done from the day and I've been there, you've been there, you've been there. And freezer meals save lives. That's all. I don't know how to say anything after that. <laughs> well, I don't know really how to follow that, but I'm going to give you a recipe because it's a good one and it's fast. Um, I do wanna say before I get into the recipe that if, if it takes you twice the time, if it takes you an hour to get these assembled, don't feel discouraged, You're not don't a failure. feel hard on yourself because an, an hour to make 12 meals is amazing and mm -hmm. that's 12 nights, you don't have to think about dinner. That's like Christy said, that's that's pretty much two weeks. And and I mean, you're a rock star if you did that. So, um, and you did awesome. I also want to give a shout out to our disabled friends out there that are doing freezer meals. There are some days where you have better days and you have the energy to do it. And there are other days where you are grateful for those freezer meals because it is not in you to make something for supper. So, you know, plug away at it. We do want to show you ones that are quick and easy. 30 minutes is a guideline. It is certainly not um, shameful in the slightest to take 31 minutes or more. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, what do you have next? Dr. Pepper pulled pork. Oh, yes, you do. I get so excited about this recipe. I really have never met anyone that didn't love this. It is It's amazing. amazing. I actually, my niece had a baby her fourth quite a few years ago now and I made meals for them after the baby and this was the one I was nervous because it's a little spicy so I told her like take the peppers out and you know if you're nursing or whatever mm -hmm. like and she's got little kids um but this was the one where she was like we need the recipe now <laughs> so anyway this is our doctor the Pepper. recipe is down below <laughs> Yes, I forgot to mention that. You can find the recipes for these in the description down below. You're going to put a pork shoulder or butt into a large freezer bag. You're gonna add an onion that's just coarsely chopped, so super easy prep. Then you're gonna add a can of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. 
some Dr. Pepper, a little bit of brown sugar, salt, and pepper. That's it. You're going to take the air out, of course. It's a little bit trickier, I'm gonna tell you, because of the Dr. Pepper, because the Dr. Pepper bubbles, and so sometimes you gotta wait a little bit for those bubbles to die down, or you have to seal it over to one corner and then kind of push those air bubbles up through that corner before you complete the seal. Anyway, then you're gonna get this in your freezer on the day of cooking. You can cook this in your crock pot. It would also work in an instant pot and you're gonna shred it. And like we were saying earlier with the barbecue shredded chicken, you're gonna serve this on buns with garlic mayo and coleslaw. But for this, there are two ways you can do it. There's probably more than two ways, but depending on what your family's spice tolerance mm -hmm. is, <laughs> Our family loves spicy. The spicier, the better for a lot of us. So we keep the peppers in there for the whole time of cooking and we even shred the peppers in there and we eat it like that. Christy's family. We do totally different things. <laughs> um, the peppers are in there, so it's in part of the marinade, right? When, as it's defrosting, um, I usually take the peppers out actually before I even cook it. Sometimes I will leave one in. The sauce itself is very spicy. One pepper is plenty for us. And then I certainly don't shred it and put it in with the pork. I will, <laughs> after it's done cooking, I will remove it and then shred the pork. And there is still some heat there. So you have to know this. Yes. You know, we have quite a few recipes that maybe have, I don't want to call it a misleading name because there's nothing in this that would indicate that it's spicy. And mm -hmm. if you have never had an adobo pepper, how would you know? Right. Um, somebody had asked about our chili chicken and I had commented that it wasn't very spicy. And somebody said, aha, I'm so glad you said that because chili chicken sounds like it's going to be spicy. You need to understand, this is spicy. This, this Dr. Pepper pulled pork is some spicy stuff. And I have an amendment to make. When you're talking about the, the garlic uh, mayo, when you're doing it with the beef dip, mm. don't use garlic mayo, make horseradish mayo. Yes. Yes, it's so nice with the beef dip. Okay, back to the pulled pork. That's how we handle the spice at our house. So you know your family, you know your spice level tolerance. Um, now my husband and I do like things spicy, but if I ever want my children to eat anything, they... they... <laughs> you can even put just the sauce of the adobo sauce in there and leave the peppers out even when you're making it, mm -hmm. or just put one pepper in there. You know your family, you know yourself, and you know. The other thing that I wanna say about this recipe is if you live on your own, this is a great one because instead of making it in the freezer bag you're going to make this directly into your slow cooker and then when it's done cooking you're going to shred it and then you're going to portion it out into quart size freezer bags those are the medium freezer bags because then you're going to have single serving or two serving portions of this and it's amazing and if you made it as a freezer meal as a large freezer meal and you have leftovers because you might, depending on the size of the pork roast yeah, that you they bought. they tend to be large. Yeah, then you can also freeze your leftovers. It's not really safe to take something that was raw and frozen mm -hmm. and then thaw it and then freeze it again raw. But once you've cooked it, it's you, totally you safe totally freeze it. to freeze it again. So the same is true of that Christy was saying earlier with the barbecue shredded nachos with the beef dip, anything like that, the zippy shredded chicken. chicken. Like if you wanna make it and then cook it and just freeze it in smaller portions, that totally works for those of you that have smaller families or live on your own. This is the simple Swedish meatballs. It is very simple to cook together because we're starting with our Costco pre-cooked meatballs. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now you can make your own meatballs. I'm not gonna stop you. The Costco ones are just really, really good and they're easy and they're frozen and it's so easy. So we're gonna start out with a couple of pounds of meatballs. We're gonna add cream of mushroom soup, some sour cream, some soy sauce, parsley, nutmeg, and pepper. And you're gonna mix this all together in your bag, seal it up and freeze it. This is a hearty one. There is a lot of meat going on in here and the sauce is so good. So on the day of cooking, you wanna thaw it. You're going to either 
cook it in your oven at 350 covered and it's really not going to take long like 20 minutes half an hour max or you can throw it in your slow cooker throw it on low for a couple of hours and then you can serve it with your like your egg noodles you could serve this you could serve this with potatoes you could do the baby potatoes like you're at ikea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really simple and really great and another one that's actually not too bad to um divide up if you wanted to yes. do smaller portions of this if you are a couple or living alone yeah if you divide it up what you would do because the meatballs are already cooked so you would just mix the sauce together in a bowl mm -hmm. and then portion it out evenly among the bags or containers and if you want you can make mashed potatoes we've got a garlic mashed potatoes recipe on our website that is pretty darn amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you could portion these into microwave safe containers. I'm going to pop a video right there oh, yes. to some freezer meals for one that are in those microwave safe containers where they're kind of like homemade TV dinners. And you've got your protein, your side dishes, and it's a full meal. Next, we are going to do vegetarian taco soup. And it's weird, but this recipe will probably take you the longest, even though it's super, super easy because you're going to have to open cans. Christy was saying earlier that we love our electric can opener, and that is so true. There is a link below this video to our Amazon store, and you can find that there, but it has saved us it has saved our wrists it's and saved our, our thumbs. Wrists. And something else, as my, well, for the longest time, your daughter was the can opener. Yes. Like she liked to run the can opener and do any, if we had to do cans, we called her. And as she kind of grew out of it and started like doing prep for us, bless her heart, mm -hmm. my son is now the can opener. And he gets quite disappointed if he's like in school while we're doing something that requires lots of cans. Like our red sauce and our corn chowder, there's a few recipes we have that are pretty like can intensive. Yes. <laughs> And so we, we save those for when he comes over or again, he can sometimes be disappointed if, if we don't. Oh, you did the corn chowder already without me. Yeah, it's like a power tool, right? So into this vegetarian taco soup in your bag, you're going to throw in some kidney beans that are rinsed and drained, some white kidney beans that are rinsed and drained, diced tomatoes, kernel corn, you could use frozen or canned, some chopped onion, tomato sauce, a can of diced chilies, a little bit of taco seasoning, not a full packet, just two tablespoons, which is half a packet. And then you can add the water now, or we recommend adding it on the day of cooking because if you add the water now, your bag is gonna be thicker and take up more space in your freezer. And your bag is also gonna be a little bit more unstable as you're assembling this. So we generally, when it comes to broth and water, we just make a note on the bag to remind ourselves to add it on the day of cooking. You're going to, again, get as much air as you can out of your bag. You're going to just squish it in there to combine. Now the squishing part's kind of fun for like something soupy like this. Uh, some of my kids have sensory issues and when they were younger, they used to love <laughs> Helping Squishing us soup. squish bags, especially the corn chowder. Actually. The corn chowder was a hit in the sensory department. It was like a sensory bag for them. <laughs> but um, then on the day of cooking, you're going to thaw this and simmer it either on your stove top or in your slow cooker. Now, if you want, you can top this with some shredded cheese and some tortillas or some tortilla chips and it's really tasty. You can also put some fresh avocado on top. It's just a really easy soup. But as I said, because of the can opening, that one's probably gonna take you the longest of all these recipes. Isn't that funny? It doesn't get any better than that or any faster. I'm telling you, it was a speed run. This was, we did a lot more talking in this video than actually it took the time to make the meals, but. You know what, there's nothing wrong with story time with Charlotte and Christy. And you know, because some people, they like to fast forward and they can do that. Our regular viewers are very kind and love to listen to our stories. <laughs> Even when we ramble. Even when we ramble, because do you know what they say? It's like, it reminds them 
of when they hang out with their best friend or their sister or something. And that really makes us feel good. Yeah, it's true. It is true. We do have a lot of fun hanging out together. And, I and think... not everybody can make freezer meals together. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> You need to get along to make freezer meals. Yeah. yeah, no, no, we do great. And and like I said, like Charlotte said before, we're neighbors. We see each other all the time. Our kids hang out. It's it's very very nice. Um, so get a friend, make a plan, do all your proteins together. Think of all the tips that we gave you in this one. And we want to hear how it goes. So let us know in the comments what your favorite meals were and how long it took you. Again, if it took you an hour and a half, we're gonna applaud for you because you've got 12 meals in your freezer, so way to go. Um, we wanna hear all about it. So thank you so much for joining us today. We love it when you're here with us. Happy cooking.